Alright class, welcome back. And on this video, we, this is actually a two-parter, and it, it covers chapter 8 in the Wall Raven book, but it's covering the ventricular rhythms. But I split it up into two parts, and in the first part I'm going to talk about is the premature ventricular contractions, and it's kind of important to understand how we describe these. So, we talked in earlier videos about a PAC, a PJC, usually narrow, they're coming from a different place. A PVC uh, is coming, there's an irritable focus that's causing the muscle to send out an electrical signal. Physiologically, remember that the heart is able to generate its own impulse. When it gets irritated tissue, hypoxic tissue, it likes to just fire off. Uh, it, it wants to do that, okay? It knows that it needs to beat. But again, this is a... Um, this is a bad thing, especially if those beats start falling in really bad places. And I'll explain here in just a second. But usually a premature ventricular complex is a single beat and not an entire rhythm. So just like a PAC and a PJC, we use it to describe if there's extra beats or funny little beats involved in, in the heart complexes. Um, so again, there's a... Uh, as you see here, you can have a lot of different morphology with a PVC, and it, it is strictly based upon where it comes from. But the, the key things to identifying them is they're usually wide compared to the normal complexes that the person is having. So look at this one. This is a narrow one, a narrow one. And this, again, it's got a Q, It's actually got the QS complex, uh, and then the T, it goes right into a T wave. So again, this is coming from the bottom part of the heart. It's wide. It's different. It looks funny compared to the other beats. Okay? Now, so uh, again, you can have PVCs look way different from the standard complex. And that is a very key thing to understand. Matter of fact, that's how we use it to identify it. Okay? A PAC, a PJC is going to pretty much have the same complex that that the normal QRSs were having. Remember, it's still going in some way, shape, or form, either starting in the junctional node or it's starting in the, it's somewhere in the atria, but going through the AV junction. So they're going to look normal. In a PVC, it's starting in a different location somewhere in the lower part of the heart. Lower, it's got fatter muscle, fatter tissue, therefore it's going to have a fatter EKG wave. So, Again, there's all types of configurations that they can have, okay? Um, so understand that, and, and it, this is usually due to where it is happening. And again, us as paramedics, we don't, there's a couple times where we need to know if it's different. And we'll talk about that here when we talk about the, 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 the types of waves and, and what we call them. Um, so this is a PVC, again, with a compensatory pause. And notice that it, if you take the, the timing, and I'm going to grab my pen here. Um, sorry, back. So I go back here. It's got a, and it does have a compensatory pause to it. And I'm trying to find the pen, guys. Sorry. It's not wanting to, to help, help me here. There it is. Okay. So the pen. And give me the pen. So notice the distance here. If I was to draw that same distance right here between these two, this one would probably going to equal this one, okay? So this is an example in which there is a compensatory pause. Remember, all of the, the potassium and sodium hasn't really reset when this fires, okay? So it's going to take the heart just a little bit longer to reset. Remember, we got to get the cool kids back outside. we got to get the nerds back in the schoolhouse, okay? So it's going to, but if it beat early, if the school bus came early, then it's going to take a little bit longer to clear them out on the next run. Okay. Now let's go back to here. So this is what we call an interpolated PVC. Notice that the R to R interval is the same. And this one right here actually probably scares me a little bit more. Um, and the danger is here is, is this fired really early in the refractory period. Okay. I would say you're up probably into the, this is a very dangerous one as a matter of fact, because it's actually occurring in the middle of the T wave. 
this is the one that will lead to a lot of lethal rhythms, V-fib, V-tac. So if you're seeing that, that's, a, that's a, like a major red flag. But notice that the heart didn't compensate here. This R, R to R is the same as this R to R, okay? And again, it, you know, you're going to eventually have to pay the energy debt to that. Now, a unifocal PVC. This one looks the same way that this one looks, okay? So what is that telling us? That tells us I've got my little heart up here, all right? And the problem is, is that instead of beating from these guys, right, what's happening is, and let's go down here and grab my pen and change ink here. So what's happening here is there is a spot down here that's saying, you know what, I'm torqued off it. It fires, okay? Now here's kind of the good news, by the way, guys. It stops right there because, again, you know, that tissue right there doesn't allow things to go through it normally. And so now you've got right here, and it's firing. But obviously, it's going to be moving away if I go look at my poles here. You know, again, negative, positive poles are down here if we're looking at it in lead two. So obviously, when it was looking, it's looking this way normal, this way normal. But again, it's going in a different way to go back. And notice how it's nice and wide. It's a different shape. But all of them, it's this is only this one spot that's firing, and that's the good part here, okay? So it's a unifocal PVC. They have the same shape. It's coming from only one focus, okay? Now, let's make this even worse here. So this guy, and I'm going to draw my heart back up here again. And start blacking here. Uh, let's see here, let's draw our ticker, and here we go. Remember, this is there, AV node, and going down here, and going down here. All right. So here's the problem here. Problem with the unifocal. And this is why we kind of get scared when we see that one. So we got an irritable spot here. Let's say that that's this guy right here. And then if I look at it again, and here we're going to make it where we can see this one. And you also got an irritable spot over here, okay? So what's happening is, is this guy's, that would represent this guy right here. Now, guys, by the way, this is relative. This is not the scale. This is not, um, are there ways to tell that electrophysiologically? Yeah, there is. But for our purposes, we need to know they're different shapes, okay? And that's the key thing here. They're different shapes, and that's going to cause a problem because, again, this guy here, he's firing off in the red. This guy over here in the blue, he's or the bluish green here, teal if you will. Uh, he's firing off in a different way. So remember, it's reading these. Remember, your leads haven't changed, but where the the beat is starting out at is completely different, which is why it's giving you guys a different shape. Okay, now. What that does tell us physiologically is I've got two or maybe more places that are irritated. And because of that, I've got a very irritated heart, which can lead to, again, dysfunction. It can lead to the, the patient going into a lethal rhythm. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I'm not really too happy about that. That's okay. This ain't too bad. Remember, if it fell in between here, Guys, we would be pretty scared about that. This one's a little bit off of that. That's the good news. And this one's a little bit off of that. Okay, so we're actually okay. Um, but the long and the short is is the that that the there's got multiple spots that are firing off due to irritability. And that means you need to do something about that irritability. Okay. By the way, these guys right here, unifocal PVCs, people walk around with them all the time, okay? What we usually do is simply um, is usually just an oxygen therapy and supportive care for these guys is all we really need. If there is a bunch of PVCs, and I'm talking more than 10 a minute, and it's actually affecting the cardiac output, we may treat them at that point. And I usually get a doctor on the phone before we do this. Uh, when I first started in paramedic school, man, you had six or more PVCs, man, you treat them like you, boom, you hit them. And, and what we found out was, is, eh, it's probably not the good course of action. 
Uh, are these things actually producing blood moving? And that's a kind of a good question to ask yourself. Look at your pleth wave. Make sure that they are actually producing pulses. Problem with this guy right here is, is it's coming from more than one spot, which means you've got a really irritated heart. These guys we usually treat. This is an amiodarone treatment, 150 and 100 over 10 minutes. Lidocaine uh, kind of depends on your protocol. Um, but this guy we want to reduce ventricular irritability with. All right. Well, that's not the only kind of PVCs we have, though, guys. So the other PVCs that we have is that R on T phenomenon. I think I hit on this one already. So remember that your refractory period here. You got your absolute refractory period and you got your relative refractory period. So in this area right here is the absolute refractory period. And the good news is, is no matter what you do, the heart really can't beat on that. Again, the toilet bowl is not full. The ions haven't shifted the way that they need to shift. Because of that, it, it physically cannot squeeze. But the problem is, is it can squeeze during the relative refractory period. All right. Now this stinker right here, Look at that. He is starting out right in the middle of that refractory period. Okay. This is known as the R on T phenomenon. Okay. So by the way, um, uh, ectopic A, uh, it, it exhibits the R on T phenomenon. Notice that this guy right here, though, this guy in the, in the B is a little bit different. And what I say by, what I mean by that is, is simply, he is actually off of the T wave. So the T wave ends right there, and then it fires, okay? So this guy is okay. That's not an R on T. But this guy, yeah, this guy is an R on T. And if he's an R on T, you definitely need to be looking at that. Uh, pro most of your dysrhythmias come to pass, VFib, VTAC, because that little phenomenon happens right there. If you're seeing that it's t it's it's time for amiodarone, it's time for lidocaine. We need to do reduce the irritability of that heart, or you're going to be pumping and blowing on this patient. All right. So again, now they can occur together. Isn't that a pretty couple? Yeah, these are pretty couples right here, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's not good, by the way. So I've got a one spot in my little heart here, and it's firing off. But it's so irritated that it's firing two times together. Now, these can actually pair together, maybe go three or four regular beats and then pair back up again. Again, a sign of increased irritability. Need to be thinking about treating this, okay? Again, unifocals, don't worry about them. Multifocal, worry about them. R on T, we worry about. Couplets, we worry about. And what happens if we have a, a couplet and then a couplet together, or maybe four or five of these nice big white beats? And this, by the way, should be scaring the snot out of you, okay? Uh, we, the the uh, PVCs occurring on a run, or, or the other term we use is a run of VTAC, okay? And again, this is a serious sign of irritability because whatever that little spot is that's firing off down here, Buddy, he is going on it like a meth head on crack, okay? He's going for it. He is absolutely, he, and the good news is, is your heart, the top part kind of goes, hey, wait a minute. It stops, and then it resumes its normal. But um, the problem with this is, is, yeah, it's a nice little run, but what happens if that just keeps continuing? You end up with a patient on in VTAC, and again, then you're, somebody's going to get a lightning ride. So if you're seeing these little runs here, it's not going to be long before you have that other problem of, of a actual full-on ventricular tachycardia, and you need to be thinking about treating that patient, okay? Now, to top it all off, not only can we do that, we can do it where we have a normal one, a PVC, a normal one, a PVC, a normal one, a PVC. So the drummer's in the room, boom, ch, boom, ch, boom, ch. Now... I really want to know if that is pulse producing or not. By the way, where I have a real problem with this one, by the way, is that uh, it's an R on T. And so R on T, I definitely would treat. But as actual by Gemini goes, if it's a little bit extended out, be careful about treating 
these just because again it's going to be it's going to be more than 10 a minute okay here's the problem when you kill these when you kill these what is the lower rate here so if i've got them and they're producing pulses i usually will call the doc and say hey what do you want me to do uh some doctors want me to treat it uh there's other doctors that go and eh, not quite sure um Dr. Frank's usually one of, of I believe he he does it, but here's here's my the problem with doing that. Okay, the problem with doing that is if I, the problem with giving anti any antiarrhythmic drug is it's going to kill these guys right here. That's the good news. All right, so if I kill these right here, what is my underlying heart rate? One, two, three, four, five, six. So the underlying heart rate would be 60, and actually I'm kind of okay with that one. And probably if you get the if you get the PVCs out of there, it's probably going to go back to a little bit faster and get back to normal. Um, but the problem is, is what if that underlying rate is maybe 30 or 40, and then you decide to give amiodarone lidocaine, procainamide. You decide to give one of those drugs, and now you got a underlying heart rate of 30. Uh, yeah, well, the good news is we can treat that, we can pace it, but, uh, you kind of gave them the drug that caused that problem. So, look at your underlying rate before you go blindly treating by Gemini. See if it's actually a pulse-producing PVC, and this is a good time to consult with the doctor, by the way. Um, the ACLS algorithms say that you need to treat it. Uh, I think you need to be a little bit more cautious when you treat this particular one, because, again, there's underlying factors that you got to look out for. So again, regular PVC, regular PVC, regular PVC, known as by Gemini. Well, not to be undone, you know, we got to have, you, know, you got a bicycle, you got a tricycle, you got a quadcycle, I guess. So, well, again, so you can have tri Gemini. So again, regular at V, regular at PVC, right? Uh, we will rock you. That's the pattern, okay? So again, these guys right here, now, obviously they were drawn here, uh, they're all on T's, so it's going to be kind of difficult. But again, look at your underlying rhythm. Again, I wouldn't have no problem. Again, if your patient's not symptomatic, I'd leave them alone. If they are symptomatic, they're, they're dizzy, they're weak, they're having chest pain, then I would definitely treat this. Again, make sure that underlying rhythm is fast enough that if I kill these guys off, which is what my amiodarone, procainamide, lidocaine do, if it stops those, would the heart rate be fast enough to support life? You really need to take a good look at this. All right, the last one again is Quagemini. All right, so every fourth beat is a PVC, okay? And some people ask me, can they be um, unifocal or... Usually these are unifocal, guys. Usually if they're... If, there, if it's bi-Gemini, tri-Gemini, quad-Gemini, it's usually a unifocal PVC. There's only one shape to it most of the time, all right? Now, one last thing about this, and this is something I want you to definitely understand. If, the heart, if that underlying heart rate is less than 60, remember that your muscle actually serves as a pacemaker. So if these pacemakers up top fail, so this guy fails, okay? Change your name here. If this guy decides to go on vacation and this guy decides to go on vacation and you're going to fire off, this muscle's going to fire off because it knows it needs to fire. A PVC a lot of times is, is confused with an escape beat, okay? It's coming from the same spot. It's going to have the same shapes. It's going to be wide, but the problem is, is that if you give that person lidocaine or you give them amiodarone, you're killing that ability to make these guys, okay, which is obviously bad. So if you've killed this pacemaker and you've killed this pacemaker and now you decide to give amiodarone and kill those pacemakers, congratulations, you have just created what we call in the medical world a systole, okay? Super bad, obviously. Uh, you know, the good news is, is all people do end up in that rhythm. We just don't need to put them there. So if you've got a slow heart rate, 
do not, do not, do not give amiodarone, lidocaine, or canamide. Don't do it. All right. So again, the rules for PVCs, they usually do not have a P wave in front of them. They are wide and bizarre, uh, greater than 0.12 seconds. There's no PR interval because they're, and it causes irregularity. Okay. But look at the rest of this rhythm. It's pretty regular, okay? This is pretty regular. These guys are pretty regular. Only the funny little beats here and here are the ones causing the issue, okay? So when I name this one, obviously, if I look at just this part of the rhythm, looks like a sinus rhythm to me, sinus rhythm with unifocal PVCs, okay? Sinus with unifocal PVCs, okay? So that's how we kind of use the term, okay? So make sure that you describe your PVCs. Are they multiformed? Are they uni or uniformed? Okay. Are they the same shape, unifocal, different shapes, multifocal? Okay. Be sure to describe that when you do that. All right. The same way with, uh, if I go back here to the couplet guy. Okay. We usually say sinus rhythm with coupled PVCs. Uh, sinus rhythm with the PV, unifocal PVCs that are R on T. If I go back to this guy, I've got sinus rhythm with multiform PVCs, okay? And I usually, if I've got them that many, I usually try to say how many a minute I have, roughly, okay? Um, if I've only seen one couplet, I would probably say that he's throwing one couplet per minute. So use those words to describe actually what's going on with your PVCs, all right? All right, we're going to hold off on this one. We're going to start on the next one because obviously I went long-winded on this one. But uh, again, PVCs is, a, is kind of a big one because we see a bunch of them. And treating them the wrong way can cause some serious problems. I'll see you guys on the next video.